All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here at the Springs, and it is a delight to see all of you here today. Thank you so much for coming. It's our, it's our prayer that uh, every single Sunday when we gather together, that you will experience the presence of God, and that you will hear the word of God that is... Um, that is uncompromised, unwatered down, because I want to be a pastor that tells you what you need to hear, not just what you want to hear. So today, some of the uh, content that I'm going to share with you is going to be pretty rough. So I want to invite you to put your uh, seat belts on, and uh, we're gonna and we're gonna pray through this together, okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to hear the word of God, and you're going to grow. You're going to develop, you're going to get some spiritual muscles going on in your, in, your, in your heart and in your life, and you're going to make some progress in your relationship with God. You're going to make some progress today in your relationships with other people. So are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask God that your word would go forth with great anointing and clarity Lord God, we ask that uh, our hearts would be open, our minds would be receptive to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to each of us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. Um, we're going to continue today with the uh, series in the book of Ephesians, and we've kind of been taking our time through the book, just walking step by step, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, because the book of Ephesians is powerful. I don't know if you've had a, t had a chance to read through the entire book. It's a short book, only about six chapters. Uh, but the first half of the book is very uh, doctrinal. It's all about the Apostle Paul telling us all that God has blessed us with, all that he has done for us, all the, all the wonderful things that he's done to save us, to adopt us, to rescue us, to bring us into his family. He has blessed us immensely. Yeah. And we have read that in the first three chapters of Ephesians. Now, as we're working through the second half of Ephesians, it's more practical. It's more about how do you live this Christian life? How do you live a life that's worthy of the calling that you have received? So uh, as, we go forward, I, as we go forward today, I just want you to take out your notes and, uh, and a pen and just take some notes. I'm going to give you some powerful stuff today, and I just want you to, to write it down. Sometimes it helps if we just take the time to write some things down that God may be saying to us. But... Listen, before we dive in completely to Ephesians, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to everyone who gives around here, to everyone who serves around here, to everyone who prays around here. Because, because of you and because of your generosity, your service, and your prayers, we are able to move forward in the vision that God has given this church. Now, if you're wondering what this church is all about, I'm going to give you four things just, just as a uh, preface to the message today that, that I'm excited about and I'm grateful to each of you about. Every week, we invite people to know God. Everybody say, know God. Know God. <clears throat> Every week, we invite people and we see lives changed. In this year alone, just that we know of, at least 80 people have made decisions to follow Christ or to rededicate themselves. So we just want to praise the Lord for that, to know God. We also, the sixth is the second part of our vision, we also connect people to life groups. Our mission in our life groups is to help people discover freedom in Christ. And approximately 100 people, this is amazing, 100 people are regularly, actively involved in our life groups in some form or fashion. Either leaders, host homes, apprentices, uh, and just attenders of those groups. So I just want to give God praise. We are advancing in the vision of God, making a difference in helping people to find Freedom. Not only that, not only knowing God and helping them to find freedom, but we also are very intentional about helping people discover their God-given purpose. To be honest with you, it breaks my heart to see born-again Christians, child of God, people of God, sons and daughters of the living God, not know their purpose. 
It breaks my heart when, they, when, when we're just floundering around and the body of Christ doesn't know their place. And so we're really intentional about helping people, and we do that through uh, every other month. We do the growth track. This week we're doing it on Thursday night at 6.30. Uh, it's our it's a, um, e- Essentials 201 this week at 2.30. We talk about the habits of, a, of a, the healthy habits of a believer. It's powerful and it's a catalyst to help you begin to discover your purpose and begin to live that out. And just so far this year, at least 21 people have participated in the growth track. And I'm just excited about those 21 people because they're like, I want to use the gifts and I want to use the talents that that God has given me to serve and plug in to my local church. And then finally, the fourth part of our vision. This is so awesome. It's just to make a difference. We want, we want to make a difference. We want to join together. And we have about uh, 85 people who are officially on our dream team serving right now. Our dream team is our army of volunteers around here. Nothing gets done around here without the dream team being a part of that. It's so important. So, so important. And the wonderful thing about the dream team is, is it's never full. There's always room for more. And so I just want to praise God because of you, we have a growing, we have a life-giving local church that is advancing the kingdom of God here in this Las Vegas community. And can we just pause right now and just give God praise for how he's working, how he's moving. We praise you, Lord. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you again for your prayers, for your generosity, and for your serving and joining us in the mission of God here at the Springs Church. So you ready to dive into the message here? Go ahead and grab your message notes. As I was preparing, I came across a story, um, and there was, there was a man who had been out of work for a long, long time, and he decided to look for work and, and put in an application at, his, at the local zoo, Okay. So the zoo, the, the uh, zoo keeper told him, um, I don't really have any openings right now, but the, the applicant was like, I can do anything. Like, I will clean poop out of the cages, or I will do whatever you need. And the zookeeper was like, eh, I'm sorry, we love to hire you, but there just aren't any openings right now at the zoo. But noticing how big and burly this applicant was the, the zookeeper suddenly had a, had a bright idea, he thought. And he said, this is crazy, and you, and you don't have to agree to it, but would you be willing to put on a costume and dress up and pretend to be a gorilla? Sounds like a fun job, right? Okay. Our gorilla, he said, last week it, it died. And our most popular, he was our most popular exhibit in the zoo. And if, and if you will be this gorilla, and if you will put on this custom-made costume, we are going to pay you really, really well if you'll do that for us. And so, desperate for work, uh, the man took the job. Now, he was a little apprehensive about how this is going to go, especially on his first day. But he put on this gorilla suit and he climbed into the cage and he made a few gorilla moves and he beat his chest a little bit. And then the the people absolutely were watching it and they loved it. He was a big hit here at the zoo. And and the next day he tried to take it the next step and he started shaking the bars a little bit and he started screaming and and running around and the crowds were loving it. They were absolutely, the, the crowds were growing and just ecstatic about this new gorilla that's in the zoo. And by the third day, this guy was really enjoying his job and he began swinging on the vines. All right. Now, he, he got so excited, he swung too far and went over the wall, and he landed right smack dab in the middle of the lion's cage. Okay? <clears throat> the lion turned around, started walking his way. And the man knew that if he called for help, what would happen? 
people would discover that he wasn't really a gorilla, right? But he knew that if he, did, if he kept quiet and didn't call for help, that he might be the lion's lunch, right? So he screamed, help! And the lion whispered back, shut up, stupid, <laughs> or you're going to get us both fired. <laughs> Okay. Now, you might agree, there's a lot of people in the world today, and even in the church sometimes, who are just putting on a show. They're just pretending to be something that they're really not. You might know someone like this. I know none of us here are like this, but you might know someone, they they project one thing in, in public, but they're another thing in private, okay? They say one thing, but they do another thing, right? They're, what are they? They're inauthentic. They're not real. They're fake. They're, they're, they're not the real thing. Do you know anybody like that? Okay. As we continue our study in Ephesians today, the Apostle Paul is going to address this thing right here. And he's going to to talk to us very plainly, very bluntly about how to walk out an authentic Christian life. How to be real. How How to not be... I read a book one time and it said this. The thesis of the book was be real because being fake is exhausting. Let's be, let's be real. Let's open our ears. Let's open our hearts. As we go to Ephesians chapter 5, I want us to just start there in uh, verse 1 and, and verse 2. The Apostle Paul is about to lay something really, really powerful out for us. He says this, follow God's example. Underline those words. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love. Underline that phrase too. Walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. In other words, what Paul is saying is this. As God's beloved children, we are to follow after him. We are to follow his example. We are to imitate him Some of your translations say, be an imitator of God in loving one another just like Christ sacrificially loved each one of us. You see, Paul had been calling the Ephesians church for some time now to put off the clothing of anger, put off the clothing of dishonesty, of unwholesome words. He's put off all of those things, and you need to put on Christ-like character, like truthfulness, like kindness, like forgiveness. These are the clothes that are fitting for believers. And in this passage, Paul is calling the believers to follow God's example. Be imitators of God. Don't be imitators of the world. Hello. Don't be imitators of what you might find on television. Don't be ir- imitators of what you might find on the internet. No. If you want to be like somebody, you need to be like God. And this is what Paul is going to teach us in the next few verses. This is so, so important. So that phrase, follow God's example, it comes from the Greek word that's that is, it, I'm going to butcher this, but it's mimitis, something like that, okay? It's the word that we get the word mimic from, mimic, someone who copies specific characteristics of another person. And Paul is calling us to be, be a mimic of God. And when we do this, we will, learn, we will become like him and we will learn to live out the Christian walk in a very truthful and authentic way. Not pretending, not being fake, but living out an authentic Christian walk. So how do we do that? Okay, Paul gives us three 
main things in the rest of this in the rest of this passage here. So I want you to jot this down. This is the first one. Walk in love. Walk in love. Contrary to the what, what the world will tell you, love is not a, a feeling. Love is not an emotion. Love is not just physical attraction. Love is not having sex with somebody. Love, love is not just liking someone. Rather, love is a choice. Love is Jesus Christ. Love is God. And love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we are saved. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers us, enables us to love God and to love other people well. Let me give you this definition. You can jot this down if you're taking notes. It's this. Love is a self-sacrificing, caring commitment That shows itself by seeking the highest good of the one loved. Think about that. I'll let you jot that down. Let that sink in. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you about what love is. Love is a self-sacrificing, caring commitment that shows itself. Love always shows itself, right? It shows itself by seeking the highest good of the one loved. Loved. The Bible talks a lot about love. The Apostle Paul talks a lot about love and, and the priority of love in your everyday life and even in your ministry. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says this, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I do not have, say it with me, love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging Symbol. I'm just making a lot of noise if I don't have love. If I'm not walking in love, it's just a bunch of noise. And he says this, if I have the gift of prophecy and I, and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but if I do not have love, I am nothing. If you don't have love, you're a bunch of noise and you don't have anything, the Apostle Paul is saying. And he said, if even if I give all that I possess to the poor and to give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Do you hear the priority of love? Walk in Love And the Apostle Paul continues, and he's going to say, I'm going to describe to you what God's love is like. And I'm going to describe to you that when God fills you with his love, this is how you are going to walk. He goes on to say, love is patient. Hello. Anybody need more patience in their life? Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Listen to his description of love. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Anybody have anger problems? Okay. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Man, this is the love of God. And this is the love that we are called to walk in. It says this, it, love does not... Delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Say that phrase with me. Love never fails. The priority of love, the call to walk in love. I'll counsel people sometimes, and I'll just say, there are four words that you, that you should live by if you're seeking to walk out this life of love for other people. And the four words are, I'll put them up on the screen, I love you anyway. Think about this. I love you anyway. This is the love of God. We were dead in our trespasses and our sins. 
We were on our way to hell, but, but and we were enemies of God. We had offended him. We deserved his, his wrath. He loved us anyway. Okay, so in your personal life, in your relationships, in your marriage, in your workplace, somebody talks bad about you, somebody hurts you, somebody betrays you, somebody does something against you, and I love you anyway. The love of God is not dependent on somebody loving you back, right? Now think about this, your, your love for me does not determine my love for you. You can talk bad about me. You can betray me. You can disagree with me. You can do this or that. But I love you anyway. Okay, say that with me again. I love you anyway. This is the love of God. This is unconditional love. This is love that is a choice. This is love that is from Jesus Christ. This is the love of God. You cannot do anything to me to make me stop loving you. This is how God feels about you. And this is how we are called to walk in this life. I love you anyway. Now, Paul, in the next few verses, he's going to bring up the opposite of walking in love. Okay? He's going to talk about walking in lust. Everybody say lust. Okay. So if love is about giving... Lust is about taking. If love is about sacrifice, lust is about selfishness. If love is about serving others, then lust is all about me. It's all about me, 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 my, 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 I, I, I. Didn't Toby Keith sing a uh, country song about that? Okay, it's all about me. It's all about I. It's all about number one. Oh, my, oh, my, or something like that, right? Not too bad. Okay. Let's go now to verses 3 through 7 in Ephesians chapter 5. Paul is going to give us some very sober uh, warnings right here. He says this, But among you, remember he's talking directly to Christians, But among you there must be not even a hint of sexual immorality. Think about that. Not, think about how strong this, this command is. Not even a hint of sexual immorality. That word, the Greek word that's translated sexual immorality is uh, porneo. It's where we get the word pornography. It's anything that is, that is perverted, that is sinful, that is just messed up. That It's fornication. It's sex outside of marriage. It's it's. Those kinds of issues, any kind of sexual immorality, the Apostle Paul is saying, watch out. These things are not acceptable. They are completely unacceptable for the child of God. He says this, or any kind of impurity. What's impurity? It's, it's, it's when things are mixed, when there's a, a mixture. No, God calls us to be pure. To have one heart, to have one mind, no mixture of any kind. And he says, or of greed. Greed is one of the most difficult things to see in the mirror. It's selfishness. It's all about me. Greed, I want more. I got to have more. I'm not happy unless I have more. I'm greedy. greedy. Because these are improper For God's holy people. There must not be a hint of any of those things among you. Because they're completely unacceptable for God's holy people. He goes on to say, nor should should there be obscenity. Uh Oh, now he's talking about things that come out of our mouths. Okay, Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking. Look at this. Which are out of place. In other words, they, they belong nowhere near God's holy people. Watch out for what you say. But rather, thanksgiving. Your mouth, your words, the things that's coming out of here need to be words of gratitude. Words of thanks. 
to God and to other people. He goes on to say, for of this you can be sure. The Apostle Paul is about to lay down something really, really strong here. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, because such person is an idolater. He has an idolatry in his heart. He has put other things above God. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Man, these are strong words from the Apostle Paul. But we need to listen. If we really want to be people who walk out an authentic Christian life, we need to really pay attention to what Paul is saying to us here. Because you think about lust. It's, it's, uh, it, we primarily think about it as having an inappropriate, inappropriate, intense feelings of physical attraction towards another person. But, but it's possible to lust or to covet just about anything. Money, property, objects, of course, other people is included with this. But, but think about this. Think about it like this. Lust compels a person to seek to acquire something that is contrary to God's will. Or desiring to possess something in a manner that is contrary to God's will. And when we continue down that path, when we practice that, it leads to what the Apostle Paul calls idolatry. Putting other things where God should be in our lives. So what if you're a Christian here today and you're like, man, I know in my heart, Pastor Brian's reading my mail today. I'm just in trouble. I got sin in my heart. I'm living in a way that I shouldn't be living. I'm, 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 I'm doing things that are sexually immoral. Uh, I have impurity in my heart. I have a greedy heart. Or maybe you know that you have set up an idol in your heart. The awesome thing about God is he doesn't want you to stay there. He doesn't want you to be bound up by those kinds of lies and strongholds. He wants you to understand the truth. He wants you to know what it says in 1 John. Look at it in your notes or up on the screen. It says this, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, listen to this, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Did you see that? We walk in the light and we know that the promise of Jesus' blood, there's power in his blood. To cleanse us from all sin. And if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now listen to this part. This is the most amazing part of this whole verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. The truth is, we may have sin in our hearts, we may have set up an idol, but God loves us. And he loves us too much for us to stay in that place. And so he says, now you need to transition, you feel conviction in your heart, now it's time to step into the light. And it's time to open up and to make your confession to God and say, I admit it, I've been living this way. And I'm coming into the light today. I'm making myself known. I'm revealing the secrets of my heart to God. And I'm saying today, I'm repenting of my sins and turning back to God. And the blood of Jesus, that is so powerful, cleanses us. And God forgives us. 
My friends, you can be forgiven. You can be made clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody who's experienced that, say a big amen. Okay. Number two is this. Walk in light. So walk in love. Walk in light. I want you to think about this point with me just for, just for a few minutes. Walking in the light is directly related to following Jesus. Because Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness anymore, but shall have the light of life. Not only that, but also walking in the light has, has, to, has nothing to do with being perfect. To have being perfect, uh, having perfect behavior, but it has everything to do with being known. Being known. Walking in the light means that we are willing to be known for who we, who we are. The, the truth about us, warts and all, Right? It doesn't mean that we have reached perfection. Walking in the light simply means that we've stopped hiding. We've stopped pretending. We've taken off the gorilla suit. And to be honest with you, this terrifies most people. It terrifies them. But let me tell you something. This is the only way. That we can discover what real life is all about. Is when we walk in the light. When we come out of our darkness. When we stop hiding from God. And we stop hiding from our brothers and sisters. In Ephesians chapter 5 over in verse um, 8 through 14 it says this. For you were once darkness. But now you are light In the Lord, live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And church, it's my prayer today, and this is the heart of my message today, is that let's wake up. Let's wake up, church. It's time for us to stop hiding, to step into the light, stop hiding from God, and see that Christ will shine upon you as you walk in love and as you walk in the light. And the wonderful thing about this is as we walk in the light, God will unfold his amazing plans for your life. There be no no guilt, no shame. You will enjoy fellowship with God and you will enjoy real fellowship with other believers. And you'll experience such joy. You'll experience such peace. As God unfolds his will for your life day by day by day as you walk in the light. I love this verse in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter until the full light of day. I mean, isn't that an amazing picture? Think about that. God's unfolding his plan for your life, and it starts out, you got a little bit of light. Now God says, okay, I want you to take another step of obedience. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to obey you, God. Oh, there's some more light that's being shed. The sun's getting brighter in the sky. Okay, well, now God's going to continue to unfold 
his plan for you, his, his amazing, awesome plan for you as you take step after step after step of obedience to him. Amen? The light gets brighter progressively as you take steps of obedience to him. Number three is this. Jot this down if you're taking notes. Walk in wisdom. So the Apostle Paul, through this, he's saying, be imitators of God, right? He's saying, follow God's example. Walk in love, walk in light. Now, I don't want you to forget wisdom. Walk in wisdom. We live in a, we live in a day, I know you know this, where knowledge is plentiful. It's, knowledge is everywhere. There's self-help books Everywhere in the bookstores, row after row, and the libraries, and on the internet, talk shows are dedicated to sharing expert advice on everyday things like marriage problems, raising children, how to lead a healthy, happy life. There's all kinds of knowledge that's stacked up in this world. The internet is filled with all kinds of self-help articles and a blog posts and commentary about how to fix all the problems that we go through in this life. And there's and there's easy how to do it for dummies, right? Have you ever had a uh, how to do this for dummies? Like um, uh, fix your marriage in five easy steps for dummies. I don't know, but it's fo- it's all these instructions and it's all these all these knowledge Things that come at us and we're supposed to do all this in our own strength and in our own wisdom. And so I think you would agree that gaining knowledge is not the problem. Gaining wisdom is. Think about this in Ephesians. Let's pick it up back in uh, verse 15. It says, the Apostle Paul says these words, be very careful then. How you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Right? Just pause right there. He's saying, look around at your life. Look around at your relationships. Look around at your words. Look around at your behavior. In other words, examine yourself a 360 view in the mirror. Look at how you are living your life. Is it unwise or is it wise according to God's word? And he goes, he says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. That means look for opportunities. Look for chances to make a, make a difference. Look for chances to show love. Look for chances to walk in more light. Look for those opportunities and make the most of them. Why? He says it right here, because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be a fool. Don't be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. He goes on to say, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead... Listen to this. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You want to learn how to walk in wisdom? Be filled with the Spirit. You want to make the most of every opportunity? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he says this, this being filled with the Spirit, it will even change what's coming out of your mouth. It says this, speaking to one another in, in, with psalms, singing and, and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Remember, the Lord's will is that we're, we're, we're not filled with all these negative things, but we are filled with gratitude, with thanksgiving. Wow, God has blessed us so profoundly. We've been adopted into his family. Wow, praise God. Thank you for his amazing grace. When we are filled with the Spirit, gratitude, joy, and love for God and other people will come out of us. Do you want to be wise? 
be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And we have to seek the source of true wisdom. What is that source? It's not found on the bookshelves. It's not found on the internet. Unless you have a version Bible app or any Bible app. <laughs> then you can find the true source of wisdom that is found in God's word. Wisdom is only found in the word of God. Amen? Uh, write this down if you're taking notes. I put this up on the screen. Living a life of wisdom isn't just about adding to our knowledge. It's choosing to allow what we've learned to affect the way we live our lives. This is wisdom. We apply the truth we learned. Where's the power in wisdom? It's in the application. It's in the doing. It's in the practical obedience steps. It's not just having the knowledge, but it's actually applying that knowledge to our lives, to our marriages, to our relationships, to our workplaces, to our church life, to our business life. Applying God's word in our everyday lives. That's wisdom. So the Apostle Paul says, hey, you want to learn to be imitators of God? You want to learn to live an authentic, non-pretending, uh, real, authentic life? Then I want you to learn how to walk in love. I want you to learn the, the importance and the power of walking in light. And I want you to learn wisdom. I want you to apply these things to your life because when you do, your life will be transformed dramatically. You will discover life that is truly life. You will discover the depths and the riches of God's word like you never have before. And you will know God in a deeper and richer and more fulfilling way than you ever have before. I'm going to go ahead and invite the worship team up. I'm going to ask you three simple questions. I want you to just think about your life for a moment. I want you to think about your relationships, your marriage, your relationship with God. I want you to just go ahead and bow your heads. Close your eyes, please. I'm going to ask you three simple questions. Number one is this. Are you walking in love today? Are you walking in love today? Number two is this. Are you walking in light today? Number three, are you walking in wisdom today? Where do you need help? Where do you need to repent? Where is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Just imagine. What would happen today if you made the wholehearted commitment to follow God's example? To be an imitator of God. To walk in His love. To walk in light. To walk in wisdom. It would absolutely change your life forever. So church, look at me for just a second. Let's don't be a people who pretend to be people who we're really not. Let's be authentic, beloved children of God who walk in a very real and a very powerful, sincere way with our love for God and our love for people. 
the power of the Holy Spirit will help you live this way. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to empower us to live righteously in an unrighteous world. Have you opened your heart to being filled with the Holy Spirit? You need Him. You need His power. Not only that, the truth of God's Word is powerful enough to set you free from anything that has bound you, from any stronghold, any obstacle that has held you back in your relationship with God or your relationship with other people. The truth of the Word of God is available and powerful enough, more than enough, to set you completely free. The Bible says you shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Will make you free. Would you stand with me, please? pray for you this morning. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, Lord, that you inspired the Apostle Paul to shoot it straight, to tell us exactly what we need to hear and not just what we want to hear. We thank you for the blessings, and we thank you for the challenge live a holy life. We thank you that you empower us by the power and presence of your spirit to live righteously in this unrighteous world. So Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now that a new uh, level of your power would be manifested in their lives, God. Lord, that you would strengthen them in their weaknesses. Lord, that you would give them the grace and the goodness and the kindness to repent from all their, all their sin, from all known practices of wickedness, from everything that the devil has deceived us with, the devil has lied to us, that we've bought into. I pray, Lord, that your truth would set us free. And I pray, God, that your truth will not only uh, penetrate our minds, but it will go down into our very spirits and our souls, our, our minds, our wills, our emotions. And that truth would work powerfully in our hearts and minds to set us free so that we can serve the living God with a clean conscience, being, having been purified by the blood of Jesus. Strengthen us today, I pray. Help each of us to walk in love, to walk in light, to walk in your wisdom as we imitate you and as we follow your example. It's in Jesus' mighty and holy and powerful and awesome and amazing and majestic name we pray. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Guys, if you... If you um, came here this morning and you do not have a relationship with God, maybe this is your day. I want you to know today that God loves you. He has an amazing plan for your life, and you'll never be able to really walk out His plan for your life unless you know Him. You have a relationship with Him. You, you go beyond religion. And you have a personal, intimate relationship with Him. So if that's you today, I just want you to pray this prayer after me. And then we're going to open it up for altar ministry time. But if today is your day to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord, I want you to close, everybody, close your eyes and everybody just pray this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today a sinner. I have been living my life without you. I have been disobedient to you. But today I'm coming home. I'm choosing to repent of my sins and to turn wholeheartedly to you. 
I believe, God, that you sent Jesus to pay for my sin upon that cross. And I believe that on the third day he rose again. I put my full faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. Thank you that you have forgiven me. Thank you that you have loved me. Thank you that you have never, ever given up on me. And today I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I have been born again. I'm a child of the living God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Let's give God praise this morning.